In this step, we're going to get on to doing some proper 3D modeling. So we're going to create a, uh, a primitive shape and then we're really going to manipulate that to create a new shape out of it. And the shape I want to create is kind of a futuristic 3D holographic projectory type thing. Um, it looks better than it sounds once it's all finished, trust me. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a new cone. So I'm just going to click once on the cone box there. I'm just going to drag it out of the ground like so. And then I'm going to go into the channel box and hopefully you should be able to see you've got an option for the channel box down this side of your screen here. So I'm going to click on that and I want to change a few settings. So I want the radius to be two, the height to be four. Whoops, that's 24. Try again. Two, and four. I just want to make sure that that again is not in the ground. That's okay. And then I want the subdivisions axis to be 18. Because I don't really need too many. And I want the subdivisions height to be five. And you can see what happens when I'm changing the subdivisions is that changes the number of edges that are there. The more edges you've got, the more detail you can put into a shape. And in this case, because I want to change it in quite a specific way, I know the number of edges that I need. So that's um, what that's all about. Now what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate the vertices of this shape. And what vertices are, are they the, the points that intersect all the edges. I'm going to move those around to create a very specific shape. So in order to do that, we're going to open the modeling toolkit again. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to move into one of the orthographic views. So I'm going to move into my front view. In fact, I'm going to use my side view because it's a little bit cleaner. There's not, you see, there's a, a pillar behind it in this view. So click on that. And when I've got it selected, I'm going to press F so that it fills my screen, which makes sense. And then I'm going to click on this one here, which will put it into vertex selection mode, which will allow me to select just the verts. There we go. Now, in order to do this, to keep it neat, I'm going to work on this shape uh, in rows. You can work on single vertices at a time. Um, that would be one vertex at a time. Um, but I'm going to work in rows because I, I know exactly what I'm going for. So I'm going to click and drag on this row here, which is the second row up. So it's not the row right on the floor. It's the second row up. And all I want to do with this row is move it up to about there. So you can see it goes up and then this line comes in slightly. And then the next row up, which would be this row, I'm happy with the position and the size of that. So I'm going to leave that one alone. But the next row up, again, you can see I'm dragging a box to select all of them. Oh, continue. I'm going to move this row down to about the same again. So you can see that line's now consistent. But what I'm then going to do is using my scale tool, and this is important as well. I'm going to use this middle manipulator to bring that back out. And you can see the edge here is now somewhere in between these two. What I do want to show you though, and I'll just do it with um, the four view one, is that if I drag from the middle, everything stays nice and um, circular, which is what I want. But if I was dragging from this axis here, it's only it's going the wrong shape. It's not saying circular uh, or cylindrical or circular. So you need to be really careful when you're doing this to just drag from the, the middle manipulator when you want to do that. So I'm just going to get that to be the shape that I want. I'm then going to set the next row up. I'm going to use my move tool to just pull that down again. And I'm going to try and keep about the same distance as I've been using. And then I'm going to open this out a little bit because I'm actually trying to create a bit of a, a hollow inside this shape. And then in order to make it hollow, the last step I need to do is select this one point at the top, this one vertex at the top, and I'm going to move that down so that it sits in the middle of the shape. And you should be creating something that looks like that. Uh, and then when you look at it in um, your perspective view, you'll have this kind of shape, which is exactly what we're looking for. So well done you, that's some proper 3D modeling there. You really have come on quite a long way.